longer in this line, but Lord, come right up to where you want it in order that the dead may rise and there be a perfect body for me in Jerusalem, ready for my time. Help the Lord to be to understand what the prophet said for us before us in the study of the word. That it may do us good, Lord, that it may be in our man, O oh God, and may nurture us up in it. Bring our bodies in subjection, Lord, because we know thou art the God of all flesh, Lord, you made man to be obedient to you. And by your spirit we're claiming that promise this morning to be obedient to you, Lord, to show forth fruit unto your praise and glory, which fruit, Lord, be first of all believing this word and living that word by the power of God within us. In Jesus' name we ask you. Mm-hmm. <coughs> the ones at the end time. And uh, it is a, to be expected, like see, it is to be expected that any denominational brother, especially Pentecostal in doctrine, might well be bitterly hurt and absolutely outraged for being described as a tool of the devil to deceive the last day church uh, world, which is it's the church world, to the end that both spiritual and physical death engulfs the world as Brother Branham sets forth in his message. Now, that's exactly what Brother Branham is saying about these people who came when they anointed with the Holy Spirit with the wrong word or tools of the devil, and they are used to deceive all but the elect to bring the world, of course, the world church to the Antichrist. It is not difficult to realize the anger and animosity he evokes when he declares that he and he alone has the true ministry of vindication and the true word of restoration, and all others are impersonators and deceivers. Now, that's a blank statement that's very correct with his message. And uh, that's like Jesus said, all that ever came before me are thieves and robbers. He never did explain it fully, and you go by in history, it's a very difficult remark to put in his place. I don't understand it myself. Maybe he's talking anybody that said they had something would do you good and save you outside of the, the scripture. He said uh, they're thieves and robbers because Christ was the uh, theme of the scripture. He was the one spoken of. I don't know really what it was all about. But Brother Branham comes on the scene and he says that everybody else is an impersonator and deceiver. Of course, that would be outside of this word. Now, surely we can understand their theory, which may well be unleashed toward us who believe this message. When Brother Branham categorically places the judgment scene of their white throne rejection right in this hour that we believe to be his appearing amongst us. And that's what Brother Branham did. <coughs> For the prophet places Matthew 24, 24 and Matthew 7, 21, which says they'll come in that day and do so and so. And he said, I'll depart and never knew you. So the prophet places Matthew 24, 24, the deceivers and their rejection in Matthew 7, 21. And in the same breath speaks of what is going on now, as though it were already happening at the white throne. For the prophet speaks of the wheat and the tares of sitting down together in the kingdom. They are doing it now and will do it soon again uh, at the white throne, which is actually the day after the morn, because a thousand years is in one day. And we find that in Matthew 24, 11 to 14. So we just might... Look at that, where Brother Bannon is speaking. Matthew 22. <clears throat> and when the king came in to see the guests, he saw their man which had not on a wedding garment. And he said unto him, Friend, how came this fellow and thither not having a wedding garment? He was speechless. And then said the king, The servants bind him hand and foot and take him away and cast him out of darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth, for many are called, but few are chosen. He referred that to this very hour, sitting down in the assembly, listening to the word, and not receiving it, and so therefore they are cast out. Also, remember, Eden was God's headquarters, or his kingdom on earth. And uh, at that particular time, it was when he was in, uh, had Eden and Adam Eve in divine order, that they were able to stretch forth their hand, which they did not do, to eat of the tree of life and live forever. And so we have the tree of life here under Eden conditions in the sense that we're getting back to Eden very, very rapidly. Now, the, in looking at this then, what we're talking about, Brother Bram is putting this group of people here at the white throne categorically, which is true according to Malachi 4. Now, most people don't want to admit that. They simply cannot admit to, to imminency of the, of the hour 
and the irremediable immediate conditions. They simply cannot believe it. They think there's something going to happen yet. There's going to be some measure of grace that this thing could be put off. Maybe we can work it out. That is a lie from the pit of hell. It's over. Amen. Either this is what the prophet said or we've all been fooled. And when I say all, it's a very, very few people. Very, very few. <clears throat> it's got to be over because time and eternity has come together. And so we're looking at the white throne as no other people did. Now everybody is thinking of the great tribulation. And that's true. It should be thought of. But we bypassed it. We're not interested in it. And if the people were smart, they wouldn't be either. They'd be looking at white throne. They don't know that this is that hour. They just 24 hours off, if you want to know the truth, as God contacted. The prophet's scathing indictment is that these people, these prophets and people, claim they are known of God and know God, but they are imposters and were never known of God, as it says in Matthew 7. So they're not backsliders. Pentecostal people say these are backsliders. How can they say that? That's like saying, well, oh, I used to. You used to know me when I was 12 years old. Oh, I never knew you. I never knew you. You may call some kind of a fool or liar. You never did know. You're not backsliders. Why, why try to make the scripture bleed the way, sound the way you want it to sound? Face up to it. He said, I never knew you, period. Well, if he never knew me, never knew him. Why, why fool with God? Why, you know, you ought to write your own Bible. You say, well, I wouldn't do that. You've already done it. See? Do a thing and lie about it. I never stole the candy off his mom. I didn't steal it. What's all over your face? I wouldn't know. <laughs> I mean, it's not. Further judgmental assessment is that since they are of Satan, and Satan is speaking through them, they are just like their father the devil. They cannot handle the word, but are entirely false to it, though genuinely anointed by the Holy Spirit, and under those conditions should know the truth. <clears throat> we left off reading where Brother Branham is using Matthew 7, wherein Christ condemns him the workers of iniquity for using spiritual gifts to vindicate themselves and their organizations before the people. Hope you got that. You're exactly like Balaam who prophesied perfectly but refused the truth of the word as it was in Moses and Balaam himself died condemned in a battle against the people of Israel even as today these people will die in Armageddon. All right, page 45, 193. That's exactly right. When it came to the word, you refused it. He's talking to these false anointed ones. Oh, brothers, see the deceiving part? Not prophet exactly, but with the word, true word, vindicated word made manifest, you workers of iniquity. Now, what he's saying here in my estimation is this. They never rejected Brother Branham as a true prophet in the works that he did. They rejected him as a word prophet, which is ridiculous. Because if anybody's going to know the word, the prophet's going to know the word. Because that's what a prophet's all about. But of course, they don't believe that anymore. A prophet merely foretells a few things and he just drifts along preaching a bit. You know, it just works out fine. <clears throat> but that's not what we're dealing with here. Because when you deal with the prophet Elijah restoring, you're dealing with the larger area. Now also on top of that, I would say this is Brother Branham is also saying, these men are prophets to truth. Very, very true, they are prophets in the legitimate sense of their performing genuine signs and wonders and miracles and things. So therefore, you cannot now say, well, William Branham is no prophet. These people aren't prophets. That's a lie. William Branham was a prophet, they are prophets. It's just, you've got to stay with the word. You can't say, well, Balaam wasn't a prophet. Balaam was truly a prophet, but not the true prophet. Amen. Because the true prophet would have been with the word. As Paul said, if any man thinks himself to be a prophet or spiritual, let him acknowledge the things that I write on you are the commandments of the Lord. Amen. So you see what we're saying here. Okay, he said, you workers of iniquity. <clears throat> First of all, they knew better. <clears throat> they knew better. So they could have done it right, and they wouldn't do it, because they've been told. 
Satan has tried in all ages to impersonate the true word. We, we know that, don't we? Now, the word impersonate means to personify, take the place of, or act the part. So Satan has always acted as though he was one with the word, that he could tell you what it's all about. And people just don't want to accept that. <clears throat> the very first place Satan showed his hand to mankind was in dealing with the word. <clears throat> then what is the last place he's going to show it? In dealing with the word. What's it going to be? In the middle of the same thing. As I've said before, you look at the beginning, you look at the end. <clears throat> if I've got a board, it analyzes oak at one end, and the other end, it's an oak board. All right? The devil's at the end, the devil's at the beginning, he's always done it. He simply cannot handle the word. Now, under the seventh seal, Brother Branham tells us that Satan cannot do a thing about the third pull, which is the revealed word of God. Now, don't take the, the third pull as being tremendous manifestation of, of vindication. It isn't. <clears throat> as though that's the third pull. I should, refer, should rephrase that. I should say that. Don't take the, the third pull, the, the great things that were done there. That's a ministry in itself. It's really a ministry of vindication, not that it needed vindication, but it's a constant growth of the vindication to the point where you can accept what Brother Branham says as being true, because you've got to believe that those mighty messengers, embodiments of the Holy Ghost, the seven spirits been before the throne, all came down at one time in the presence of Almighty God in full representation and manifestation, told him seven complete messages of the seven thunders of the seven seals Amen. and revealed it. <clears throat> so that's what you're, you're looking at there, see? Now, that great vindication he had, he says, did you see the third pope, how things were done so stupendously, showing you that he had the authority to declare that which no one else could declare, that he was the one for that end time. Okay, now, Satan cannot handle the word, though he wants to impersonate it, but he simply cannot do it. Notice, 195, they came up to the borderline and quit. Looky here, he said in Hebrews, the sixth chapter, where we were reading a while ago, and I told you to refer back to it, and we will for the next couple minutes. Now, this business again, borderline, we want to look at it. They came up to the borderline and they quit. Now, all scholars are familiar with the term borderline. And to them it simply means this, that you can come to the place where you see something and know in your heart that you should repent and receive the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior. And like the seed sown in the ground, you might have, it might be your experience that the seed fell upon the hard pavement. And you see, I know there's something there, but you walk away. <clears throat> well, the birds in the air get that and it's all gobbled up. All right, then there's the one, of course, that falls amongst the thorns and is gravelly. And so the soil is just not right, and it's just not right in your life. So you say, well, no, I just don't think I like that. So you, you drop it. <clears throat> then you get to the place where something else chokes it out and down the line until you could come to the place where it's good ground, there's good seed. Now, people use that for borderline, and they take the idea of borderline then, where Israel came to the place where they knew there was a God, they knew there was something real, and they came right to the position where they could say, well, hey, we should, we'll step over now because we know there's something really great here. But they don't do it. <clears throat> they simply do not do it. Now, to understand the history of true borderline, let's go back to what borderline is as against what I'm going to talk about today. Brother Branham's illustrating the borderline. We're going to go to the third chapter of Hebrews <clears throat> because we don't want to be uh, sort of fooled by what he's saying here. Okay, we might start then at the seventh verse of Hebrews 3. Wherefore, as the Holy Ghost said today, if you will hear his voice, harden not your hearts, as in the provocation, in the day of temptation or testing in the wilderness, when your fathers tested me and proved me and saw my works for 40 years. <clears throat> See, they wouldn't cross over. So God had to keep them running around the mountain for 40 years. They all dropped dead and you were supposed to win anyway. Wherefore I was grieved with that generation and said, They do always err in heart. And always in heart they remain the same. They're just full of error. Like I mentioned this morning. See, there wasn't any room there for, their, for reality. And they have not known my ways. So I swear in my wrath, 
they should not enter into my rest. Take heed, brethren, lest there be any in any of you an evil heart of unbelief in departing from the living God. But exhort one another daily what is called today, lest any be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. For we are made companions of Christ, if we hold the beginning of our confidence steadfast unto the end, while it is said today, if you will hear his voice, harden not your hearts, as in the provocation. For some, when they heard, did provoke, how be it not all that came out of Egypt by Moses. <clears throat> now you see, the people here were not willing to take the word of a vindicated prophet, lock, stock, and barrel, and say, that's it. They had to fuss about it, they had to argue about it, they had to deny it, they had to toss them back and forth amongst themselves. They were strictly in unbelief. Now that's being done right today, and the people who say call themselves message, and outside. Outside, they don't give two cents for it anymore. William Branham is dead, 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 gone, 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 and his followers fight, 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 the so, who needs it? They don't care two bits. They wouldn't give you two bits for it. <coughs> no, they wouldn't do it. So here's a lot of problems right here, and it's amongst us. Let's not kid ourselves. Yeah. But with whom was he grieved forty years? Was it not with them that had sinned? Was carved? That's the spelling of Now we've gone by twenty-one years now. Is it nineteen to go? Who knows? I don't know. I'll be a long time dead by then. And to whom swear he that they should not enter in his rest, but to them that believe not? So we see that they could not enter in because of unbelief. Let us therefore fear lest the promise being left us of entering into his rest, any of you should seem to come shorter. For unto us was the gospel preached as well as unto them, but the word preached did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in them that heard. For we which have believed do enter into rest, as he said, as I have sworn in my wrath, if they shall enter into my rest, although the works were finished from the foundation of the world. For he spoke in a certain place of the seventh day on this wise, and God did, end, did rest the seventh day from all his works. And into this, and in this place again, if, if they shall enter into my rest. So there's two different rests speaking of there. <clears throat> there's one where God did his own resting from his work, and now you can, you can cease from yours, which this, this scripture here is merely a type of what's in 2 Thessalonians 1, where we come to rest. It's merely a type of it. So you've got to watch this. <clears throat> and again, this place of into my rest. Seeing therefore it remaineth unto them, un see it remaineth that some must enter therein, and they to whom it was first preached entered not in because of unbelief. Again, in image a certain day, saying in David, Today, after so long a time, it is said, Today, if you'll hear his voice, harden not your hearts. For if, if Joshua had given them rest, they would not have afterwards spoken of another day. There remaineth therefore rest to the people of God. <clears throat> for he that has entered his rest has also seen from his own works that God did from his. Now, your rest will bring the same place that brought God. No more works. It's all over. Let us therefore labor uh, to enter in that rest, lest any man fall after the same example of belief. So the greatest labor you and I have got is a battle of the mind. Like Brother Brown said, I'm a kid. <clears throat> now, what I want to show you here is this. This is not the same. It's only a type of what's over here in Hebrews 6. So when he talks of borderline Christians, don't go back here and say, well, I see that. You're using it only as a type. And take a look at this. Now, Hebrews 6. Therefore, laying the principles of the doctrine of Christ aside, leaving them, let us go on to perfection. That's a complete consummation conclusion. Not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works and of faith toward God, of the doctrines of baptism laying on hands and resurrects the dead and the eternal judgment, and this will do God writ. You see, there's no need for it because the simple reason has already been preached. <clears throat> it's been dealt with. So now you're going to the place of finishing it off. Well, when you finish off the house and you're going to put the little a little doohickeys on top of your house. You don't say, well, hey, I'm just going to rip her down and build her over again. You say, well, that's not a house. I can't put the top on. That's if you read the scripture as. It's already been established. Amen. You don't have to worry about it. Anything going to be done now is where the contractor takes care of the mistakes and finishes the thing off the way the house is supposed to be. Mm -hmm. so that's what you're looking at. <clears throat> this will do, God permit. God did not permit at that time. No, sir. Permission would have meant the whole body was complete. The last member had been added to the grace and the, and, the, and the love of Almighty God. But it hasn't been. Only at this time <clears throat> you're coming here. And at the time of perfection, watch what precedes it. For it is impossible for those who were once for all enlightened. And Peter tells you the same thing, the second Peter. 
and have tasted of the heavenly gift, and were made partakers of the Holy Ghost, and have tasted the good word of God, and the power of the world to come, having fallen away, not if they shall, although that's true, but now it's today, having fallen away, to renew them again unto repentance, seeing they have crucified to themselves the Son of God afresh, and put him to an open shame. Now watch, for the earth which drinketh in the rain that cometh oft upon how often? That's the word of God, seven times. And bringeth forth herbs meat for them by whom it is dressed. <clears throat> well, who's, who, who will be the husband of Almighty God? I, the Lord of planted, water, lest any man pluck by my father's hand. Receives blessing from God. Okay? But that which beareth thorns and briars is rejected, and is nigh to cursing, whose end is to be burned. You're right up to the place of cursing and burning. Which is what? The great tribulation and the lake of fire. You can't separate the two of them anymore. I want you to notice that. I know, listen, <coughs> people get this flat. In the days of Noah, eight people and eight people alone made it, right? Yeah. Eight people, the rest gone. So they say. So don't get a lot of ideas about grace and mercy and this and that. This ends grace. This is the grace of God. This is the mercy of God. This is God coming down and exposing himself to a bunch of sinners. Laying himself on the chopping block. Once more to be crucified, as it were. And the people smear and turn away. It is over. You don't need to wait for white throne judgment. It's hit you. <coughs> now, if you think, brother, sister, any other way than this, ah, I'm going to put my finger now in a buzzsaw. So I put my finger in. And it's ripped to pieces. You don't put your finger in again, approve it. It's ripped to pieces. That's what the whiteness of this is all about right now. You're into it. Your finger's being mutilated in the buzzsaw. <clears throat> whether you know it or not. So don't look down the road for a white throne. You better get very comfortable with yourself right now and with God and get the records cleaned up. This is no time for carping and like I mentioned this morning about poor old Apostle Paul being, you know, hit back by the Corinthians. Oh, you're taking liberty, you're taking this. Nobody's taking anything from anybody. We're doing it ourselves. Right down the line, this is a showdown whether we're in step with the Word of God or not. No time for babies anymore. No. <clears throat> time for men to examine themselves, know where they stand. See? And he says right here, this is that time of burning. Beloved, we're persuaded better things to you and things that accompany salvation, though thus we speak. What things accompany, sal accompany salvation? Partaking, tasting, realizing, and knowing that this is yours and saying that's it. <clears throat> How many people are still looking for a lot of things I don't know, but they're still looking for them? So borderline Christians is not what a lot of people think of in terms of simply a, a little illustration. You're looking at it now that people who turn down the legitimacy and the authority of a vindicated prophet in favor of what they have based upon their own experiences without the government of God, but within another government. Because under Moses, the government of God had come down to earth that the will of God might be done on earth as it was in heaven because that was the will of God in heaven for the earth. And you've got the same thing now. Amen. People say, Thy will be done, thy kingdom come. It's here. Amen. Amen. They've turned it down flat. Because where do you think the word of God came from? Oh, says God, I made a lot of people down here. Hell, you know, I'm glad for those nice, fine, wonderful people. Boys, I want to talk with you. You and I are going to have a conference. And would you tell me, uh, I'll back up. Oh, boy. That's the same malarkey of the Sanhedrin who said when God gets a problem, he calls on us. I'm going to tell you, God never called on you, me, to give me any input, brother, sister. The only input he wants is you and me listening. Amen. We're not doing too good a job by the time we did. But you see what we're talking about here? Borderline, listen. Borderline, brother, sister, <clears throat> is right today. And borderline <clears throat> is epitomized, you might say, in these false anointed. They can come right to the Word of God and say, yes, 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 yes. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. We believe in healing. We believe in 
raising the dead. We believe in this, this, this. Why, there's even some amongst us, bless God, and believe in sovereignty. And some will believe in eternal security. We don't turn that down. But this hogwash of a prophet thing, we'll turn that down. <coughs> no straight and narrow anymore. <coughs> no bullet off the trajectory. Everything's just fine, hallelujah. We've got a gunshot religion. Choo! Get the whole thing. When did God ever gunshot any Christian? Or shotgun? He can, he, can, he can shoot them one at a time, but he never ever took the dozens at a time. <clears throat> he doesn't throw a bomb in the water to see how many fish he can bring. Baits his line but for the fish. There's something wrong. Borderline is right today as Brother Branham expressed it, but not borderline <coughs> as the Baptists talk about it. No, not borderline as the religion talks about it, but borderline as whether you're going in or not going in. See? True, that's what we're looking at here. Okay, they came up to the borderline and quit. Now, in Hebrews 6, we're reading a while ago, he said, but thorns and thistles, which is nigh under rejection, tend to be burned, borderline. Now watch, you have tasted the heavenly gift. Taste, in other words, you've seen it. You can't just taste it with your mouth, but you saw it, and you knew that it was the truth. You <clears throat> knew what was the truth. This was the genuine McCoy. This was God. Yeah. You knew this man had to be a prophet. He had to be something. So you saw it. You knew that much. You knew that was the truth. You knew it was the truth, he repeats it. Tasted the heavenly gift. We're made partakers of the Holy Ghost. And as it fell upon you. Okay? And tasted the good word of God. Tasted, you saw it was right. The Holy Ghost falling upon you, you the weed in the field. And then turn away, denying the very Christ that sanctified you, called you, and put that anointing upon you. There remaineth no more sacrifice for sin. <clears throat> now you notice this anointing upon these people. There are those that are pretty raunchy. We saw that come out of Canada, this guy named B.G. Lim. Whether he's living or not, I don't know. He'd be what? Close to 80 by now? I think he about six years, seven years on the end now. <clears throat> but his idea was what you do in the flesh doesn't matter because the flesh is flesh, spirit, spirit. So you could be lying in a honky-tonk all night with a bunch of prostitutes, boozing it up the next morning, go out and lay hands on the sick and they get healed and everything else. And they would too. But he was a very rare beer, that breed. And you got a big werewolf bunch of the way they pulled the same stuff too. I guess he had dried his throat to live with. He didn't get that beside booze, I suppose, but I understand. But the way he drank booze day and night and everything else, you could tell where that came from. I'm not running the guy, don't you tell you the truth? Yes, you can talk about me and tell the truth, too. If I'm drinking, smoking, living in seats, living, just name it, because that's the way it is. Don't be a bunch of idiots. <coughs> Bring it out in the open. Look where all the robbers are today. James Baker and his wife. Now, they were going to have a rights, I'm going to have a movie on this one, but they retain our rights, I guess. Dicker and I. Headlines in <clears throat> Where it's going. Now, normally, these people don't cut too much ice. Now, these Roberts and, these, and, and Baker weren't too flat. But bad enough. See, they're caught. You can see it. But you see, this business here being sanctified, <coughs> most of these people here do live pretty good lives. Oh, they snitch on each other like... Uh, Jimmy Swagger. Now, why the Bible said you go, if you got a man falling, you go and restore him. He wanted to pull the pins off him. Now, he feels sorry for him. I wouldn't give you two bits for Swagger's chance of the white throne judgment. I wouldn't before God, in this, knowing this book here, knowing the prophet God, I wouldn't give you any hope at all. He's an about Trinitarian. <coughs> Typical Pentecostal. If you spit in the floor, you're going to hell. He can get adultery. He's okay. I've seen it. Legals are all the same. Always condemning somebody. Now, if you got a word behind that, you're not condemning at all. You got to just preach the word. I don't care what those guys did to the business. But I'm going to tell you, what, a lot of them live good lives. You come right down, you're fine men, except for Or and his money. We can talk about that sometime. <clears throat> so it's just where he went wrong, where the scripture does not stand with what he teaches. That's what just where he went right wrong. Became a trap. Brother Brand said another thing would be women. Jimmy Baker got trapped with a woman. But you know something. I believe somebody trapped him. Without a doubt. He wasn't alone in that thing. It's a dirty work at the crossroads. Sure. <clears throat> right down the line, popularity, all those things. See? 
and others, but they can be fine men. Start out right. But you see, turning away from the word God to manifest. He said, well, Brother Bill, all the people that come with this word, will they be purely righteous men? <clears throat> no, if there never was a righteous man outside of Jesus Christ, there's going to be problems. But I can tell you one thing. You won't go for a, you won't go for a legalized so-called adultery by believing in, in multiple marriages and saying, well, uh, you know, polygamy is okay. Brother Brown didn't say polygamy is okay. <clears throat> he said it wasn't okay. He said a thousand times better than a Hollywood marriage and divorce, but it's not okay. Let me tell you something. You know, the Methodists are preaching Methodism is a thousand times better than preaching Confucianism. But that doesn't mean Methodism, right? So it doesn't make polygamy right. <clears throat> That's just men's evil lust. But normally speaking, they, they, live, they live a sanctified life to a degree. Now, now Brother Branham said here that these people that have the Holy Spirit fall upon them according to Acts 2, which is right. Now, we read in Acts 2. Oh, we won't bother you. You're familiar with it. <clears throat> falls upon the good and the bad. He said, they, they, they say no, deny the Lord Jesus Christ that bought them. Now, I want to ask you a question. If this one here, rather over here, same thing, is here in the form of the Holy Spirit, doing in the form of the Spirit what he did when he was here in flesh, then who did they crucify? They crucified that one, right? <clears throat> they sure did. Now, I said they're going to do it again. They're denying it. Okay, now, you say, well, look at it. My father has been dead for a hundred years. Well, not hardly that. Your father dead for, well, let's say, 30 years. Well, can you deny your father because he's been dead for 30 years? You can't do it. You, see? you know that that one was there. <clears throat> you know there always was. Now, let's say that that father left the will, and now you get a piece of land. You can't deny it after you got that land. I and mean, here God came on the scene. Now, you can't deny that he's on the scene because he's doing the same things he did when he was on the scene 2,000 years ago. But they're going to deny it. It's wrong, see. <clears throat> they won't listen. It's unpardonable. He said it's the unpardonable sin. It's impossible for them to ever come to the knowledge of the truth. Now, message rejectors will positively miss the second coming of Christ because they missed the appearing. And there's no room where they can repent, for it's impossible for those <clears throat> who were once made partakers of the Holy Ghost, that fell upon the weed seed, started in with Jesus and Lord, Lord, I'm going to you, and when you hit the word, you turn back, made partakers of the Holy Ghost, even take to the saw the word manifested, then turned away from it. It's totally impossible for them to ever see it or come to it. That's thus set the scripture. Now, what he's doing is telling you, I have the correct interpretation of the words. You listen. Now, heaven and earth will pass away, but it won't. Now, <clears throat> those who keep the old original doctrines, their old dogmas, and simply take on gifts, having seen this, there is no hope for them. Now, what? He says here, Heaven and earth will pass away, but it won't. What won't? What he's talking about? Talking about this scripture's fulfillment according to his preaching of Hebrews 6. And I said, you're going to watch it all pass away. But he said, you better believe that this won't. <clears throat> Why? Because the righteous will end up in Mount Zion and the wicked at the white throne to be destroyed. Now, what's he doing? He is getting us not only ready for the millennium, because at the millennium, the heavens and earth do not pass away. They're here renovated. So when heavens and earth pass away, this is getting us ready for that hour <clears throat> at the white throne when the heavens and earth are dissolved and we are looking for the new Jerusalem. This is the hour, as he said in the seventh seal, that time and eternity have blended in a union. This is a time when he says wheat will always be wheat and tares will always be tares. And the foolish virgin will always be foolish virgin. In fact, this is that scripture I keep quoting and quoting from, hoping you're going to get it 100%, and I'm hoping the same way for myself. <clears throat> Revelation 22, beginning at verse 10, the unsealing of the book, the seven seals and thunders, seal not the sayings of the prophecy of this book, for the time is at hand. So whatever prophetic utterance is in this book is unsealed. 
at this time. <clears throat> he that is unjust, let him be unjust still. It will be. Filthy, filthy still. Righteous, righteous still. Holy, holy still. Behold, I come quickly. My reward is with me. To give a man according as his work shall be. That's white throne. Not just present. Not just the rapture. Not the, just the present presentation. <clears throat> That's the whole thing. So you see, he said to the righteous, you're going to get yours, and the unrighteous, you're going to get yours. And this is it. So therefore, time has run out. Mercy runs out. Grace runs out. Everything runs out. It's the end of everything. Seventh seal. And yet people try to tell you the seventh seal isn't open. Oh, my God, have mercy. They don't know what the prophet said. They just think what he said. <clears throat> Take one little thing and run it. Notice. Let me give you an example. Look at those people that came out under Moses' prophecy. Came out of that organization. Came out of everything under the prophecy. What prophecy? The prophecy that God said would be in that hour. 400 years later, I'm going to bring them out. They saw the great works and the wonders. They saw things like that. And came up to the borderline of going in. Say, now what are you talking about? Of coming to the place of the recognition of your part in it. Of seeing yourself as a part of it. <clears throat> knowing that this is what you're looking for. Now, that's a pretty tough statement right there. Now, Lee, there comes your name on the book. See? You've got it fixed up. You got it. And uh, you that's not here and out in the hookup, Brother Lee Vale sitting here, he's grammarizing his book of the seven church age, and the problem came up with the question, uh, what about your name taken off the Lamb's book of life? Now, actually, the, the thought in there is not really Lamb's book. That's a little slip of the tongue in my estimation there. Although it's yeah. Lamb wife is the original. <clears throat> and life came from it. There was an interjection there. So you could say Lamb's life on the prophetic utterance of William Branham, or you could just say the book of life because what it says in Revelation 22 and 19. Let's look at it. And if any man shall take away the words of the book of this prophecy, God shall take away his part of the book of life and out of the holy city and from the things written therein. <clears throat> now, since Brother Branham gave, gave, us, gave us to understand what true baptism with the Holy Ghost really was against the contra, which was, 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 which was a fictitious baptism, we could then use the same with this. True Lamb's Book of Life, and not which, and that which they figure is Lamb's Book of Life. <coughs> but I'm just laying this in there because about the only thing I can do about this is read scripture on it. But uh, we realized that Brother Branham did say other places concerning the Lamb's Book of Life that was unalterable. Amen. See, so <coughs> we'll just leave it at the just what he says here. But we know here that this is the one that can be taken out of. See, it's puzzled at a lot of ministers. But wait till you get the book. You'll understand if you've got any light, if there's any, if you've got any light in you. <clears throat> you know how the book treats that one. Notice, now you'll turn your head and won't even look at it if you don't want to see it. Like my mother used to say, you can't get blood out of a turnip, there's no blood in it. In other words, you, there's nothing to you to be attracted there, so you just leave it be. It's not your uh, desire. Notice, the light has to come, it's not in darkness. The light comes to the darkness, and the darkness perceives it not. William Branham is telling you here that there is no light in this spiritual Laodicean church that's bankrupt. It's completely dark. And the light does not come out of the darkness. The light comes from outside. And the darkness doesn't perceive it. Remember the cry to the bride, foolish and wise virgins, was, Behold the bridegroom. It was a cry from the outside, for it says, Come out. <coughs> See, behold the bridegroom, come out. <clears throat> so the cry is on the outside. There is no light on the inside. God even took Moses away from his own group to get his group out. And they were a mixed crowd. Notice now, the anointed ones in the daytime, in this daytime. As Moses brought out those children of Israel, and they listened and got all confused with that great nation up there. Now Israel was interdenominational. It had no land, had no home. It was going to a home. We have no church. We're going to a church. The church of the firstborn, the church that's in glory, not the church that's on earth <clears throat> by a man, the church that's in glory, the called out ones, predestinated to eternal life. <clears throat> and that doesn't mean at this time that we're not a part of it. And it doesn't mean that we're not a part of the true church of the bride. 
But he's telling you you've got a destination which is far beyond here. Remember the building blocks that they brought in for Solomon's temple, which types the bride in certain areas, was brought in from the outside. <clears throat> already made up but fitted on the spot it was supposed to be, which was in Israel, in Jerusalem. So, let's read this in Hebrews, the 12th chapter, what Father Branham is talking about here. <clears throat> and he says here, in verse 18, about the fact of inheriting this place. For ye are not come to the mount that might be touched, and that burned with fire, nor unto blackness and darkness and tempest, and the sound of trumpet and the voice of words, which voice that they had heard entreated, that the word should not be spoken of any more. Now this is the, sort of like the allegory over there in the book of uh, Galatians, where Paul is speaking of the, of the two sons of Abraham, one by the bondwoman and one by the free. And only the one by the free was recognized because the one by the bondwoman was Israel or Jerusalem in the physical flesh, which was in bondage and would never make it. The Jerusalem is from above. Okay, it's the same thing he's saying. <clears throat> Verse 20. He said, you don't have a thing to do with that. For they could not endure that which was commanded. And if so much as the beast touched the mountain, it should be stoned or thrust through with the dark. And so terrible was the sight that Moses said, I exceedingly fear and quake. <clears throat> but you are not come unto, but you are come unto Mount Zion, not unto Horeb, <clears throat> Mount Sinai. You're not come there. You're come to Mount Zion, unto the city of the living God. Now, where is the city of the living God? It's sure not on earth. Unto the heavenly Jerusalem, which John saw coming down, and to the innumerable company of messengers, to the general assembly and church of the firstborn. That's why Pentecost like to call himself the general assembly. Churches like that, you know. You know what I tell you? I'm calling yourself something, doesn't mean I can call myself a little red hen. I know a little red hen. I can call myself Theodore Roosevelt. Doesn't make me Theodore Roosevelt. <coughs> And everybody talk about heaven and going there. You're, you're, you're calling these names here. Grace Gospel Church doesn't necessarily mean that <clears throat> we're it. But we just let people know we believe in the gospel of grace. It's about all we do. Whatever that entails. Okay, the general assembly and church of the firstborn, which are written in heaven, and to God the judge of all, and to the saints of just and the spirits of just men made perfect. <clears throat> now notice in here that you're coming to this great general assembly, and then it jumps in here and says to God, the judge of all. Let me tell you something. You don't get in there unless you're judged first. See, so he's bringing it down from the top where the thing is and how you get in and who's getting in. The spirits of just men made perfect. And how are they going to get in? To Jesus, the mediator of the new covenant, and to the blood of sprinkling that speaketh better things than that and evil. Now watch. <clears throat> this is what you're looking at for this day that Brother Branham is speaking of. See that you refuse not him that speaketh. Not did speak, but is now speaking. For if they escape not who refused him that spoke on earth, much more shall we not escape if we turn away from him that is from heaven. Not speaking from heaven. Now the thunders were not in heaven, they were on earth. Amen. Whose voice then shook the earth at that time did? Back there at Mount Zion and when he cried out on the cross. Yet what, but now at the promised saying, this is after Calvary. This is at the end time, we'll prove it. Because this is the city you're going to. And you can't go there, nobody's going there <clears throat> until it's all made up. So he's talking to the people that of whom it's made up. Now, whose voice then shook the earth, but now promised yet once more shaken off the earth in heaven. And this word yet once more signifies the removing of those things that are shaken, as of things that are made that those things which cannot be shaken may remain. So he's telling you before anybody gets there, they all got to go through this. <clears throat> now they got to go through this. This is the evidence of, of the time to go, starting to go there. There's something which is going to be shaken down. Okay, turn it over. Wherefore we receiving a kingdom which cannot be shaken down. Now the shakedown is in Hebrew 6. Because he wouldn't go in. <clears throat> you realize what he's telling you here? Something devolves upon us in the program of God that does not give us any preeminency of any description. We're just one of the boys. But it's got to happen to us or this doesn't happen. <clears throat> you 
know, like the car that was all ready to go, everybody thought it was? But just one little thing was missing. You know what that was? A fuse. Let's bring it down to the smallest point. The fuse was missing. Everything was there, but the fuse missing. But somebody put the fuse in. Now, as long as the car was completely made up, but except the fuse, no dice. <clears throat> or the great generator's ready to go, and somebody forgot to put a switch in. Just like Adam, laying on the ground, God didn't breathe in, and God had to breathe in. <clears throat> so all signals are go. They have been in process for 6,000 years. But at the end time, there's got to be something, or the thing gets wiped out, yeah. except Elijah comes. Amen. <clears throat> See, you accept the appearing. So therefore, we receive a king which cannot be moved. Let us have grace, whereby we may serve God, except your reverence and godly fear, for our God is a consuming fire. What's he talking about? Everything gets burnt up but this. <clears throat> So we press into the kingdom of heaven, which is manifested on earth to the extent of the presence of God getting us out of here, winding the whole thing up through the millennium, the white throne, into the eternities. <clears throat> now that's what you're looking at. You're looking at this thing at this very hour. Now people don't want to look at it that way. There's a sort of, listen, <clears throat> there's a sort of buoyancy a sort of a euphoria, you might say, in the people of God, so-called, about the fact, hey, this is the end time, and we'll soon get out of here. But there is no understanding of it. That's what we're looking at. The understanding is missing. Why is it missing? Because the appearing is missing. You understand what I'm saying? Amen. <clears throat> now look, what if you had plans to... Uh, build uh, a car that works on, oh, not like Lear's idea is going to revive the old whites or the old Stanley steamer. <clears throat> that didn't work. He found a water breaks down. Nobody seen it. But let's say that somebody come on the scene and he's got the thing where water doesn't break down and mess things up. You know, the heat will still keep it going. But you know what water does. It just, it, it just never has worked out properly. <clears throat> now they're talking of hydrogen. Evidently, that they've got a car now that really works with hydrogen. Maybe who knows nitrogen, anything else? <laughs> you never can tell. They make things work with <clears throat> lead pipes, inch, whatever they got. But anyway, let's say you come to that very place that you say, "Okay, now I can go ahead and do this." But and there's a little part in here that's an electrical deal. And the thing is, you read it, but you read it wrong. You don't have an understanding. So here you are, you're trying to make this little section in here work. Now, will you ever get your car working if this section is wrong? The answer is no. Then will you ever make Mount Zion if your understanding of the appearing is wrong? The answer is no. <clears throat> See, now you say, well, I don't think the grace of God would do that. Well, i got news for you. The grace of God does that. Amen. What you're trying to tell God what his grace is, <clears throat> and you can't do it. See, the thing is, grace doesn't cost you and me a plug nickel. Except the will to receive it. But it costs God everything. Remember what Friedman says. There ain't no such thing as a free lunch. Well, go to my house and I'll give you a free meal. Hogwash. I paid for that meal. You didn't get a free meal. No. No such thing as a free meal. Never have been, never will be. <clears throat> The only free meal was back in the Garden of Eden. And that wasn't free in the ground. He had to go and pick it. Now a man gets there by the sweat of his brow. <clears throat> that is what he could eat. So let's look at the picture quite right here now. See? Okay. That's the church of the firstborn. Now, we have no church. We're going to a church. The church of the firstborn. That's Mount Zion. The church that's in glory. They're waiting for us. Not the church that's on earth by a man. No way. That, the church that's in glory. The called on one, predestined in eternal life. And what about them? They without us cannot be made perfect. <clears throat> they can't be finished. They're held here in the scheme of making my car because somebody has got to have the ability to understand what goes in to make the whole thing work. <clears throat> That's right. Now Adam lay on the ground. 
the ground, a perfect man. What had to go into him? God breathing breath of the breath of life, which was the Holy Spirit. And that man and begin to walk around, begin to himself. <clears throat> now what you need is the Holy Ghost revelation in this hour to put the church in movement. Amen. Now what does the world church, Pentecost say? Well, they take Tommy Hicks' vision. I don't know what his vision was. Goody for him. I don't believe in it. He saw the church all bound down and nailed down like, like you know, uh, the Gulli uh, Gulliver was by the Lilliputians. <clears throat> you know, in what was that book, Gulliver's Travels? I forget who it wasn't more that wrote that book or somebody wrote it. I forget now. All tired, all down there. And he said, the church was a sleeping giant. And it began to rouse itself. Hogwash. <laughs> it's going to rouse itself plumb for the pit of hell. Where do you get the church as a big sleeping giant rise up and do great works and wonders? The great works and wonders, brethren, are for one purpose, to point you to a message. Anybody knows that but understands what the scripture. Anybody knows that. <clears throat> know the reason for it. The church has had its message. Amen. See? Going to their home. When they came up to the place to cross over, they doubted the word. And came back after Joshua and Caleb and those that had gone over and brought back a bunch of grapes to prove to them the land was there, the word of God's promise. <clears throat> okay, what about these men like all these prophets? In plain English, they went over and brought back the evidence. How'd they go over? They all went over in trance and vision. They went over by dreams, went over by trances. <clears throat> Moses went over by face to face. Paul went over by face to face. And William Branham went over by face to face right there. <clears throat> they went over. They brought the knowledge. The word came back of God's promise. It's a good land, milk and honey and brought it back on this side to prove it to them. See? All right, have we seen the millennium come up? We sure have. <clears throat> have we seen Mount Zion We sure have. We've seen it. The evidence is here. See, the tally's in. You don't have to worry about some lottery game to see if your numbers come up. The numbers came up. That's another reason you look at the lotteries. That's a sign of the times. Everybody's taking a chance. Why? They put in their own thinking. Put in, watch me hit the jackpot. I put my thinking in. Hit the jackpot. Oh, I waited 6,000 years for this thing. I'm putting my thinking in. I'll hit the jackpot. You're gone. Right. You know what chance you got hitting the jackpot just in the lottery alone? You at least are four times apt to be hit by lightning than winning the jackpot. If not seven or eight times, but the actual figures were, I put it down low. Anybody remember? I think it's about as high as seven to eight times you get hit by lightning during that jackpot. <clears throat> now, in the natural, someone can hit a jackpot, but they can't take it with them. Right. So don't put your thinking in, come up with a lot of gifts and a lot of this and that, and say, well, hey, I got a me, because you're not going to have a me. <clears throat> See? And they brought it back on this side to prove it to them. And they tasted it <laughs> and said, oh, oh, we can't do it. We can't do it, though. No, can't win. What happened? They perished in the wilderness. They stayed right there and organized themselves and died every one of them. But the ones that went over and brought the fruit back, Joshua and Caleb, they went and didn't they? Now, here's something Brother Brandon is saying could be hard to understand. I don't see I got it. Moses was translated, a type of the waiting for the church and the resurrection of the Old Testament and New Testament and the raptured body. See the three there. I might read it this way. Moses was translated, a type of the waiting for the church and the resurrection of the Old Testament New Testament, and living make the raptured body. See the three there. Have to keep those threes in line. So with the believer and make believers. See, it's three kind of unbelievers. Make believer, unbelieving believer. <coughs> now listen. <coughs> now, Joshua, of course, and Caleb, they were the ones that were living. And uh, they went to the promised land. Now, Moses was waiting. It says for... What would be the Old Testament and New Testament, saints, as far as I can see that? So in other words, what I'm looking at here, it could be that the three are the living, which are Joshua and Caleb, the Old Testament, and the New Testament, and that makes up Mount Zion. He's waiting for those, that tree. I don't know. I can't see. <clears throat> I haven't got that figured out, and I don't really try to figure it out, because if I don't see it, I don't see it. But he says in here that Moses was translated. That puts him out of the picture. So, all right. So now you have, he's waiting, and what's he waiting for? Resurrection, old and new, 
the whole raptured body. Joshua and Caleb are in there already. There's your three as far as I can see it. In other words, right today, what are we waiting for? The Old Testament saints that are dead, they're going to be in. I mean, pardon me, the New Testament saints that are dead. The Old Testament saints are resurrected. They're somewhere. I don't know where they're at, but they're there. They've got a resurrected, glorified body. Don't try to take it away. Just believe God. Because they had bodies. They're gone somewhere. <clears throat> Which is not hard to understand in the sense of, hey, you're in another dimension. And, uh, hey, you, you believe the wind is real? Can't see it. Ever seen any little whirlwind jig around? You know, you can't see it, but you see the dust of stuff forming the whirlwind. But you get a big one, and it's called a tornado. Ruin you. And you don't have to see it. You can't really see it. You just see the debris that's in it. But it never hits you. You know it hit you. Now, water, you see, it'll flatten you. But wind can hit you and flatten you. Now, sound, you cannot see, and it'll flatten you, too. Knock buildings down. <clears throat> so you see lots of things you can't see. So that resurrected body somewhere, we don't have to see it, but it's out there. Just find its own dimension. So now, we got Old Testament saints, they're ready for Zion. The dead bride, New Testament, they're ready for Zion in the sense they know they're going to be there. What's holds it up? The living. So I look at that as the three, I don't know. <clears throat> 199. Remember, God never did forgive that sin. What sin? Of holding everything up from going in. Of thwarting his plan. <clears throat> of letting the devil take over. Never did forgive. For their unbelief. When God laid it out and said, here it is. Listen, this makes men without excuse. Amen. Now, how are they going to come in? Now, watch. Now, here's the big question. If it's thorn to begin with, it's thorns at the end. Only the predestinated will see it. Now, Brother Branham mentions that Baal Peor is a place where God never forgave him, and now he mentions it here, he never forgave him. <clears throat> so what does he never forgive him for? It's all really the same thing, because it's the same thing which is adultery. Baal Peor, they committed adultery. That's exactly what they did. They, they mixed the two groups of people in an unholy union, which was motivated purely by pleasure and sensual <coughs> appetites and nothing to do with the word of Almighty God. They listened to a false prophet. And then over here, they refuse to go in. They refuse to take the word of a true prophet. So what does this say here? It tells you that you can be escaping and escaping and escaping and come to the final place of escape and coming in, you miss the plan. <clears throat> Don't sit here this morning, brother, sit here because my mummy believes it, my father believes it, my aunt believes it, my uncle believes it, or they do or they don't, and I've been brought up in it, and I see this and that. You better come all the way and know where you stand. Make your calling and election sure. Amen. Find out where your heart is. Yeah. To see if it's in the Word or not. To see where your life is. Now, we're not trying to make you people that are so so wonderful that there's not one sin amongst us. They'll never be that until we're, we're changed. <laughs> But I tell you, we ought to be getting less and less sinful in our lives. <clears throat> Not puritanical, but more and pure, more pure thoughts and everything. More justice and judgment. More ability to cope with this life and the strength and the power of God, even though the enemy's closing in. Because remember, the great weapon against us is, the, 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 is this out here that's in creeds and dogmas and vain philosophies. And our life is in this word. Let's keep it there. And the more we keep it in this word, the better it's going to be for us all the way down the line. What pure living and pure thinking can anybody have than this word of God in his mind and heart? <clears throat> you never get any better, brother, sister. Now, he illustrates about St. Martin here. Notice closely now. Just like in the days of St. Martin, right before the dark ages, a godly little man named St. Martin. How many ever read of St. Martin? Many of you and I, many of you. I went down to get the writings of St. Martin. The priest said, but he wasn't canonized. Sure he wasn't canonized, not by them, but he was by God. The Holy Spirit told us to put him there in the third church age. Paul, Arrhenius, Martin. Look what a God little man he was. Called and predestined. His parents were heathen. His dad was a soldier. He had to follow his, uh, his father's line to be a soldier. And, uh, and he did. But he always believed there was a God somewhere. He was a man of the woods. And uh, could see God out there in nature. That's Brother Brandon saying, referring to himself, of course. One day he passed through a city. And there was an old bum lying there. It was cold that night. The old one said, give me something to cover me up or I'll die tonight. Nobody would do it. Martin stayed off to one side and watched him for a little while. Nobody would do it. He only had one coat. He himself would freeze, being on duty, if he gave that man the coat. So he thought, both of us have a chance to live if I'll divide it with him. So he took his own coat, split it in two with his saber, wrapped the old bum in it, 
He wrapped his coat around himself. Uh, what was left of it, of course. Everybody said, look what a funny-looking sentry. Look what a funny-looking soldier. Half a coat is wrapped around him. That night when he was off duty and lying in bed, he woke up and looked. Standing there in the room, there stood Jesus Christ wrapped in that old piece of garment that he put around him. He knew right then what you <coughs> do unto my little ones, you do what done unto me, to my anointed, lying there. He was a great servant of God. The church made fun of him, persecuted him, kicked him out, and everything else. And, but he was a prophet of God. But what he said came to pass. There, there, there's many that believed him in that age too. Now, of course, he never had what Brother Branham had when it came to saying the prophecies. We know that. But also, Brother Branham refers to himself. Brother Branham was kicked out of the church because he would not ordain a woman preacher. <clears throat> he said, there's no Bible for it. And the fellow said, you do it, you're out. Well, he said, I'm out. I appreciate that. Amen. It's an easy way to go. <laughs> 204. I want to show you how deceiving the devil is. Of course, women never did like him. I don't know why he's such a perfect gentleman. One day Martin was sitting in his study. Up came a mighty angel, a crown on his head, golden shoes on, lace around his garments of gold. He said, Martin, you know him? And he said, I am your Lord and Savior, Martin. I'm the one that saved you. Worship me, Martin. But that prophet, knowing there was a little something strange there, he kept looking at him. He said, Martin, I'm your Savior, Jesus Christ. Worship me. Don't you know me, Martin? Martin just kept looking at him. Scripture running through his mind. He said, Satan, get away from me. He said, you, you've got a crown on your head, and the word of God says his saints will crown him at the end of the age. Wouldn't that have been Pentecostal big? Watch that word, brother. That's where it pays. Now, he's not hitting throwing off of the Pentecostals per se. He's just letting you know that that's the people that stand for all the signs and wonders and all these other things and all their dreams and visions, having turned away from the original, which was Brother Branham at the end time. Somebody's got to be Elijah. And if he's not, somebody's going to come and be Elijah. Amen. <clears throat> They're going to go through the same process. They're going to turn it down. Yeah. Why? Because that's the way it goes. There's not going to be many people saved. This millions now living will never die. It's stupid. You know? Hey, I'm going to eat six pounds of candy and not have consumed one calorie. Oh, I'm going to breathe six liters of air and, I, and I'll take on 6,000 calories. You've got to be nuts. Something's wrong with your head. So why say millions living will never die when the Bible says they will? I just don't understand people. Look, I came out of Pentecost. I came out of Baptist and Presbyterian too. And they all came out of me too. One good cathartic did it. Well, I was doing it anyway. <clears throat> I'm great for body cleanse. That's another side of the times. Everything in the market now is body cleansing. Body. Why? Because your body's full of corruption. Pure, unmitigated crud. Not just diseases you pick up, but what causes your diseases. I'll give you a little health lecture right now on, on the cold and prove to you just how messed up you are. 90% of you than art will soon be. You need a cathartic. You need a cleansing. That's why the blood of Christ is stronger than ever was. <clears throat> and the light that was in the blood is shed now so we can have better light. Everybody's talking about light. Eating better. We're eating wonderful here. Don't fill your guts and make them a sewer with food out there. I try to keep telling you people something. Everything is tight and everything is real. Amen. Listen, you listen to me. I'm not here to just give you a line of blarney. I'm not trying to sell you something. No way, shape, and form. I'm trying to tell you something. Make you understand these things. Everything is right, tight to the end time, perfect. There's nothing left in the soil. There's nothing left in the food. There's nothing left in this Word of God anymore. <clears throat> it's finished. The only food at all is what you and I are getting now the prophet brought us. Amen. Came out of here shirt if the rest is wiggle tails. <clears throat> you tell that to anybody but us, they say, What do you mean? It's gone. <clears throat> See? Now listen, let's face it. Where is the where is the least corrupted part of the earth? Right down deep where you dig. And that's the only thing in here, brother, sister, that wasn't corrupted. And the prophet took it out so it so it can't be messed with the other anymore. He dug way down deep under the thunders and the seals and brought it right up. And what came? Christ. Amen. Oh, I could talk about that too. That would happen this week. Right in the physical. Down in the coal mine. Prophecy said, at a certain time <clears throat> when they dug out Christ in the rock, that was the time of the coming. And they dug it out. They're traitors to their own understanding. 
I don't care where you go, brother, sister. I don't care. You, you men are sitting here scientists smarter by me than a million miles. But your brains will never figure these things out. It's all been figured out for us by a prophet laid right before us. And he said, everything lay in nature, everything lay out here just under your nose. Every newspaper told you all about it. <clears throat> you can't find a word today. Confrontation. The peripheral. Read everything you got, every word. Plum types everything this message writes all over. Amen. A perfect revelation, perfect has come. Nature, God, everything in harmony proves this. And people blindly go on their way. You know why? Because you can prove nothing to them. You can prove nothing. They're all loused up with the MDs. They're all loused up with the... <coughs> with the <clears throat> um, sorcerers, which are your pharmacists, which control the doctors. So men and women are dying on every hand because of false education. Science, falsely so-called. Philosophies. <clears throat> they just took this word. This is the proper brother, sister. Yeah. I want to tell you something. We'd be a sure different people we are now. We'd have more rejoicing, more everything. Be like this old saint of God here. He didn't get stuck with this, this hogwash here. Oh, sir. Satan, get away from me. <clears throat> so that's where it pays to have this word and everything. One day again, the monastery, they had an old saint down there, a bunch of young monks. There was one of them kind of irritable, you know, kind of sassy type of guy. Watch this. Here's a good parable for today. He wanted to be something above the rest of them. He wanted to show himself as an authority. Bigger, something bigger, something better. All class, you know, and a great something. He had to be classical. Always wanted the other brethren to see he was different. See, no matter what it was, he was arrogant. He was the only little pebble of the beach, but nobody could touch him. Now watch what happened. Now this is the people who always want to be somebody, always want to preach, always want to be with their not. <clears throat> always want to take over, give them the need to take them out. Open one door, boy, they just walk right in, want to just take it. You know, something wrong with a guy that wants to do something. Or they just want to live for Jesus. You want to abnegate yourself and live for God. <clears throat> oh, you want to be big fellow in society, see? You follow me, brother? So he said, he prophesied. He said, the Lord made me a prophet also. I'm a prophet. Now, there was one identified prophet, man, that was St. Martin. And he was a born prophet. So Brother Ben is talking about himself. And he's a minister. But this kid, this young fellow, this young monk, about 25 years old, said, the Lord has made me a prophet. I'm going to prove with you. Said, tonight, the Lord's going to give me a big fine robe, put it on me, a big white robe, and set me among you. And all of you shall come up to me, see, and you'll take orders from me. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Sounds good, then. Now, I'll compare that today. I'll be the head of the organization. I'll take care of you. <clears throat> uh -huh. 1975, preaching down there in Macon, inviting a certain man in the pulpit, the, the platform was mine. He came there and let the people know you listen to me. He's, in, he's over there in New York. They're falling under the power now. So you can tell what he had. <clears throat> yeah, the rest of your monks listen. I went to the Canada one time, the certain preacher said, he said, they're, they're telling people around here they've got to listen to you now. He said, Brother Vance, God, who said that? He mentioned names. I said, I'll win the pulpit and I'll fix that guy. Win the pulpit and I'll fix that guy. Of every pope that fixed everybody in that pope. The same guy, I found out, he, he made himself an apostle. You had to listen to him, because his people said, now look, this is the man you listen to. I went and I said, now listen, Leonard, they're telling this about you. Let's go in the pulpit and tell the people that's a lie. He wouldn't do it. Thorson went to him. He wouldn't listen to Thorson. I'm going to tell you something, because I know names and dates and places. I'm going to tell you something, I ain't nothing. I never made myself one thing to do. I can tell you what the prophet said, and that's my business, and that's yours, I'm telling you. Amen. Well, I'll tell you one thing. That's no authority over you or anybody else. You don't have to listen to me. <clears throat> There's no way anybody can follow And you won't make it by listening to me. You've got to be elected. Because I can say this thing till I'm blue in my face and talk with you. And I will find out from you if you know what I'm saying. And maybe you don't know what I'm saying. <coughs> Because I haven't got the ability to project it. And you don't have the ability to receive it. Because I'm on a wavelength that you're not on. And you know, when you get a jammed uh, radio, <clears throat> you know, you're not getting the wavelength. Boy, that's nothing but a bunch of static. <clears throat> now look, you can get a TV, and you can see a bunch of pictures. And if you can't hear the words, just see the old guy's mouth flapping on the news. You don't know the news. 
Then sometimes you hear a description, you, you hear a description, but you can't see the picture. You ever see, ever, ever, have you ever listened to a guy talking about a, a, a prize fight in the ring, a good old boxing match, and then you see it on the screen later? See, that's not the guy I saw punching over that fella. Or you heard him tell about a ball game? See, that's not the ball game that's on the TV. I don't know where that guy got his game. <clears throat> see what I mean? You just, it's just difficult, that's all. Nobody's meant to be a big shot. And there are no big shots. I'm going to tell you something. I recognize nobody in this message as though he's a big shot. Guy phoned <clears throat> one time, long back. He leaves, said, look, he said, I'm in the West, you're in the East. He said, now, he said, look, he said, the people need someone to look to. Not as though he said we're running things, you know, he really meant he was. But he said, he said, here's the thing now. He said, they need someone to go to who will be like an authority. Well, I said, thank you, brother, and I hung up. Where's John Martin today? Where's her? You want to phone me, ask questions? I'm delighted to help you, but don't phone me as any authority, as though Levi was going to set you right, because I can't set myself right. I've got troubles, kid. My neck stiff. My God, that's bad. The Bible says stiff neck goes before a phone. <laughs> <laughs> don't kid yourself about this stuff that you've got to listen to anybody. Any special person. It won't work. I saw a fellow run around the country. First he ran after me, he ran up the brother... Uh, what do you call him down there in Jeffreyville? Then he ran after this guy, and this guy got messed up in sin. Who's he following now? Why don't you just follow Jesus by way of the Word? Yeah. Now, I'm doing my best to help you understand some of these things because I'm taking it word by word the best I can do. When I hit a tough spot, I tell you it's a tough spot I know now. <clears throat> when I see something here that's very evident, we just merely talk it over so it becomes stronger and better for us. That's all. So anyway, he's all take care of the rest of you monks. And sure enough, that night, lights came on the building, so the writing of St. Martin says, you can read it, it's authentic, it's history, and the lights came on, the rest of them watched it. Here it come. He had on a white robe standing among them. He said, see what I told you? But that was contrary to the word. <clears throat> and it was, you see. Now, you know why it's contrary to the word? Because God doesn't dress anybody up to put him head of the church. God dresses a man down and gives him a job so that God can be head of the church. You don't point to yourself. You wouldn't get this in Malachi and 1 Corinthians 15 where the church gets an order. Then they went, up and put, they, got, they went and got the old dean of the college, and he walked uh, up and down a little bit, and he said, Son, that doesn't sound right. He said, There's only one way, and here it is. There's only one way for us to know. It does look supernatural. Boy, Pentecost would have grabbed the root sinker line and so on. Not just Pentecost, anybody like me. He said, Miracles may seem all right, but they don't always seem right to the word. Now, we have such a person, an anointed prophet by the name of Martin, come up before him. And the guy said, no, no, Martin hasn't got a thing to do with this. He sure didn't. He said, you're going anyhow. And they grabbed him by the arm to take him before Martin and the robe left him. See? Deceive the elected if it were possible. See, they know. <clears throat> now, I suggest here that even the devil can bring signs that are funny and peculiar to convince people that he can. Here's years ago in Pentecost, a woman said to me, and she talked about her, her nephew being, uh, he got into spiritism. <clears throat> and uh, she said, you know, she said, Brother Bill, I think we ought to leave you alone. And she said, I think that's really deep. And I said, Sister X, it's as deep as hell itself because it comes from the devil. Just anything to grab anything because the boy was getting messages so called from his mother. Well, the mother, the, if that was her sister. Well, sis, if you can help your boy, I'm here for some help too. You say Pentecost? Yes, Pentecost. Don't tell me they're super spiritual, Methodist, Baptist, or any of them. Anybody can fall for this if you don't know what's going on. And when there's more of this in the spirit realm than there is in the house of God, I can see why Methodists and Baptists and Presbyterians, especially Methodists, will fall for that nonsense. They'll fall for it. <clears throat> the church, all the churches are full of spirit. The Catholic church is full of it. They're all full of it. You know, you don't even dare operate a gift in the church unless, first of all, you've got a man that can discern spirits to see what spirit it is. <laughs> and people are screaming for gifts in the other name. You know what I'd be screaming for? I'd be screaming, oh, God, make me so one with this word, not just by intelligence, but to the depth of my spiritual soul understanding, to, to stand here and then discern, not in myself, but in the spirit of this word, oh, God, which was sent before me. Not to be critical. But to know for my good, I don't want to be deceived anybody or anything. And I can I never get myself for it. But people open themselves up to any old thing. We don't hear, we know that. But I know around the country, they do. 
One brother, I just cannot believe it, he's got gifts right on the floor in his church again, and that man knew way, way back that that was what I'm talking about. He couldn't place it. <coughs> couldn't place it. Not to my knowledge, and we know it. What's he doing back in Pentecost? What's he doing back with gifts on the floor? What's he doing? See, not, not against any gift, but put in the proper order with men of God can handle those things. I'm for it. But see right here, it couldn't be done. Jesus said, my sheep know my voice. You say, oh, hear my voice. That's his word. They know it. Right? Man shall not live a better moment every word. See, the predestined to know this. A strange word, a strange voice. They won't follow. That's the way those fellows back there, they wouldn't follow. They knew that Martin was there. A prophet of that age, identified by God through the word, knew the word, and that man wouldn't stand before him. Now, see, Brother Bram is saying again, it's his self-vindication. They would not come and stand before him. Wouldn't do it. How fortunate are those who would stand before him? How fortunate are those who listen to the word of God and want it better than life? Yeah. Who say, this is my whole life, what else have I got? This was an example of Brother Branham, and this can be an example for you and me. To be willing to stand before that word and see where we stand, because that's where we stand before God. You see, how is that? Because if God gave a vindicated word, which means the truth, and we stand before the truth, and let the truth, you know, discern us. <clears throat> then we know we stand righteous before God. We are not fearful any longer. But if we don't dare stand before that word, we know that we're living a lie. I'm not talking about actions now, first of all. Look, what do you know about actions unless you, first of all, know about precept? You don't know if your actions are right or wrong. You may be doing something wrong and think you're right. You may be doing something right and you think you're wrong. You don't even know the tax laws. And the IRS doesn't know the tax laws either. They're finally admitting it. The papers are getting full of it. For the first time, they're admitting the deceit and every dirty deal they pull out. And now Congress is going to investigate where, where, where the IRS has deliberately pushed people to the wall because one guy is, is set on their hash right now. They become vindictive like they were to Brother Brown. <clears throat> this guy Smith, a Roman Catholic, was vindictive to destroy Brother Brown used his own laws against the Constitution. So I'll get you anyway. <clears throat> so where are you today? What do you know? Nothing. Paul said, even those that know something don't know what they ought to know. But then listen, if we get a revelation, that's one thing we know we're starting with. And from there on, is it this or is it that? Let's go to the Word. Is it this or is that? Let's go to the Word. Say, so, well, I can't quite tell. Well, sit still till you get in there. <laughs> My brother Brown said, if it's doubtful, don't do it. Just leave it for the time being. You'll come around. But you see where we're at? We have come to this place, brother and sister, at the end time, where you and I can walk to the white throne. <clears throat> see? I'll go with him through the judgment. Brother Brown said, that's now. This moment that's being done while we sing it. I've taken it as my judge, and I cast my lot with him as the righteous judge. Lord, you said so, I believe it. You're the correct interpreter of this word. You gave it, you ought to know. And you're here, and you proved it. That's fine by me. I'll take that. Then he will go with us from that point on. Now, do you think he's going to condemn himself? Ha! What man that wrote the law, that can interpret the law, now gets up and condemns himself? By giving you bum advice. He'd condemn you and say, I gave you that advice. I wrote the law. I interpreted the law. I told you. Did you do it? Yes. Get in. You're free. Right. What are you going to do? Brother Ben said, God's the judge, the jury, the panel, everything. He said, yeah, he's your lawyer. Mm -hmm. The man said, I'm going in. Praise the Lord. We're going in. Let's go in together. Lord bless you. Let's ride and be this man. Can't beat that, can you? No further token. That's your token of life this morning, brother. So, Heavenly Father, we come to you in Jesus' name, <clears throat> knowing, Lord, that you're with us. Now, Father, we want to stay with you. That is the big thing. They wouldn't do that in Israel. They came right up to the place where they could have stayed with you, and they just walked off. Now, Father, we're not going to walk off by the grace of God that you give us today, because, Lord, there's something in us that's just not going to walk off, except by grace from the devil, the world, the flesh, and all these other things. Lay it all on the altar. Leave it there. 
and begin to walk with you as the prophet said that you said in that vision, the voice said, how would you like to take a walk with me? Oh God, I know that there's a walk for everybody here. There's a walk, Lord, for the bride. There's something moving and stirring, Lord, that's so wonderful. We just pray, Father, that you'll help us to get rid of all this heart of unbelief and this mind of unbelief, the raggedy tangles of nature and things in our minds, oh God, that are not of you. And let our minds, Lord, open up, open up, Lord, like that, like that beautiful sunflower does to the sun. And Lord, we think of sunflowers, we think of of that, that man that, that sold a painting. He couldn't even get $125 for it today. It's worth about $40 million. Somebody paid a price for the sunflowers. And Lord, we believe that that's exactly what's going on today. The sunflowers, every one of the sunflowers that you paid your blood for, more than 40 billions for every single person. You paid an eternity for each one of us. And we like those sunflowers just falling you day by day. And the darkness of night, if we can't see, we just drop our heads because it's such a sorrowful condition. But Lord, we don't believe we have to drop our heads like the sunflowers do in natural. But we can keep our faces turned toward you, Lord, with your brightness shining upon us. Redeemed children of Almighty God and, and, and the pearls of great price to you. You're the pearl of great price to us. Father, we thank you for this love you bestowed upon us, this goodness, this perfection, Lord, that comes through you. We cannot praise you enough. It just thrills our hearts to know that everywhere we look, if we just want to look, we see Jesus. Everywhere we go, if we just want to go, you're with us, Lord. All of these things show your grace and your mercy. Help us, Lord, to dedicate our lives and our minds to you as never before and be happy in the service of our King, no matter what comes and enlarge our hearts until there's no restriction, there's no constrictions anymore that enlarge heart opens up for the great things of God to be poured in us and through us, not to be great, Lord, not to be great, but that great thing of love, mercy, gentleness, patience, kindness, those things, Lord, until your name is glorified. And, and it is true that we are read in the epistles, but the epistles of God. Father, bless each one in divine presence. Don't let there be any sick amongst us, Lord. I pray, Father, as this message was given for healing and restoration, healing is restoration, Lord, there won't be one of us to continue on in sickness, O oh God, but day by day reaching up, Lord, to that light which is Christ, the healing light. Just take away all those things, Lord, that are wrong about us. Help us, Lord, we pray, but above all, cleanse our hearts and our minds, because we know that as they are cleansed, Father, the healing will become much simpler, much easier, for that's what John told us, that our hearts would prosper and our souls would prosper and our minds would prosper and then finally our bodies would prosper. So we commend ourselves to you. Bring us together for Easter, Lord, and Friday. The brethren, Lord, and they come, may they come with joy and earnest expectation. May they receive for that which they come, O God. May your people be great uh, givers, Lord, donors toward the meetings here. So it most evolves upon us, Lord. We realize that. We pray we shall rise the occasion with your healing, Lord, and your wings rising upon us. Bless us in all these things. We'll be careful to give you the glory because we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. The Lord bless you.